Haythrop Park in Oxfordshire played host to the cult TV Weekender in late 2007, where the Starsky and Hutch car was just one of a number of expensive toys for bigger boys. Danger, danger, Will Robinson. The dizziest of Daleks. The heroes of the 70s. Autographs. And everything else for the coolest collectors of cult. Hello, cult. <laughs> Film 24 channel. Oh, great. <laughs> We have done some lifetime member badges. It's some small consolation for being with us that long, I know. These 14 heroic gentlemen were awarded for attending all 14 of the annual Cult TV events. Thank you very much, our lifetime members. This audience appreciates more than most the nostalgia and allure of these two fabulous icons of the 70s, the striped uh, tomato and the original huggy bear. Just a word on the street. You don't own the car, do you? You just appear no, with it. No, no. Um, you know, the car lets me hang out every time I, I come over. In fact, you know, there's such a, not a cult, but a, that's a group of, of guys who have either redone ones or a couple of the originals still, still exist, and then there was a whole new uh, interest in the car from the movie, so there are some new cars that were made for the movie out there, and, and these guys sort of have a family, and anytime they hear about one of us who was in the show, who were in the show, um, appearing someplace, you know, they, they kindly say, you know, can we show up with our car? And uh, so I've been very pleased that um, my friend uh, was able to bring his car. <laughs> So, so, David. Yes. You own Zebra 3, is that right? Zebra 3, yes. So how did that come about? That's a pretty long story, really. I, uh, I always wanted these, one of these when I was a kid, watching uh, Huggy and the other two boys. And uh, about 30 years afterwards, when I saved enough money, um, I, uh, I managed to get hold of the car. But only because I got cancer, and I thought, if I'm going to exit the planet, I'm going to have the car before I go. And then I got in remission, and uh, so I've enjoyed it ever since, really. But do you, do you drive it a lot? I do. It's it's, it's there to be driven. Yeah, you know, yeah. I, I hear lots of stories about guys with um, with Sainsbury's cars like this. Sort of oh yeah, I've done the Sainsbury's run, yeah. Um, but uh, no, I hear a lot of stories about guys who, um, who who take their cars on trailers, and I, you know, a car's there to be driven. You know, it's not. You know, it, it's got to be driven. It's got to be seen. You know, mm -hmm. under its own steam, if you like. Um, so popular was it that um, after the second season, I believe, that Ford's actually uh, got fed up with people going into their showrooms and asking for a, a Starsky and Hutch car. And they said, what the hell is that, you know? And then they realised it was one of these. So Ford's actually made a thousand of them only uh, in, this paint, in this paint scheme and um, with a couple of other options, as I understand it. And um, anybody that wants to hire it, zebra3uk.com on the website. There you go. Consider it plugged. Yeah, one thing for me is like the whole phenomena of how Starsky and and dear to the UK audiences. It's been really um, nice you know, since the last 12 or so years that I've been coming over. And uh, since I first came over when I was 17, 18 years old, to see what Starsky and has meant to the UK audiences and, U and audiences around the world has been really, really nice. You know, after 35 years to you know to be here. And, Heathrow Park with the car and and then coming back in November to do a panto in in Derby and uh, and I hear that my buddy and co-star um, Paul Michael Glazer is doing a, a panto in Bromley and then we have David Soul who lives over here and so we've all been embraced by the British audiences and 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 we really love it. <laughs> okay, thank you. Custom cars are one thing, but here's a recreation of a 60s icon which was the envy of every fanboy at the Cult TV Weekender. I'm Paul Felsky, who built the UK's first replica of the Lost in Space robot. And I'm sure you would like him to say the, the most famous phrase of all, if I can just find it. Will rule. No, no. <laughs> danger, danger, Will Robinson. So it was the original actor voicing the robot? Yes, uh, Dick Tuffeld, the, obviously the original voice of the robot from the TV series Lost in Space, uh, 
pr provided phrases. I know. Let us watch an episode or two of The Lost in Space. I'm a member of the B9 Robot Builders Club, and he provides custom phrases to the club. I was part of a, a team that looked at building a software package comprising of many different phrases, and now we have software which I've got running on my computer here, which I link to the robot, and he says an, an assortment of hundreds of phrases, any which you wish to pick. Internal computer systems are being maintained at an optimal 72 degrees Fahrenheit. And the finished result three years on is a fully automated replica, the first one in the UK, more animation than anybody else's, and uh, yeah, I've tried to make him as real as the one off of the TV. Where did you find the plans for it? Uh, when you join the club, you obviously get access to a lot of data, reference data, and there's plans for some of the parts, but other parts you can either buy them off of the vendors on the club, which, is, which the thing is for me, they're all based in America, so everything, <clears throat> excuse me, everything that I would need to work on would have to be imported, etc. So I decided, well, I think the, the most cost-effective and sensible way of doing this is for me to actually try and broaden my skill set and see how much of the robot I could make myself. Where am I? Boom, turn down the lights. <laughs> now I remember. Which way did they go, partner? Myself and about 20 other members got together, put all our phrases into a pot, so to speak. We all put some money into the pot as well. And then Dick said that he would, it was coordinated through Mike Joyce, who runs the club. Uh, he said, um, we just get Dick to do it a complete assortment of phrases and then what we came back with was about 500 phrases like I've got here and I can get the robot to you know handle virtually every occasion. Well here's the software obviously running on the on the computer I've got my wireless link straight to the robot behind us Excellent. so I can pick you know many phrases he can greet people with. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. So they're all there, and of course, when you've finished, because he does a lot, lots of phrases to talk to you while you're talking to him, when it's time to leave, it's... Goodbye, have a good day. <laughs> came out, and it's worked out brilliantly, because of course I can run from my laptop with a wireless link, and the robot's completely wireless then, which is how he needs to be, to make him authentic, in my view. And my sensors detect no danger. Yeah, remote control is clearly the way of the future. Well, call me old-fashioned. You're old-fashioned! Thank you, but I prefer manual operation any day. I've had quite a bit of past experience inside a Dalek, as I explained to the cult TV audience during a discussion panel in the main hall earlier. A friend of mine, um, we built Daleks together and started taking them to conventions, and that's how I got into all of this. Good afternoon! If you want to go into whatever career line you want to do, Start by building a Dalek and take it to conventions. That's what I did. I seem to have a frog in my throat. <laughs> right, okay, Jack, Next. Run protection, run protection. I once played a Dalek for the BBC on a flat studio floor. Oh my God. This one didn't have the ground clearance even for carpet. <laughs> if I manage to move, it'll be a miracle. <laughs> right, here we go. <laughs> I have the mobility of a walrus! It was a licensed prop, um, it was bought um, just as an empty shell, so it had no wheels, um, no seat or electrics in it. Um, so I've added the computer chair to sit in for moving it around, cast the wheels on the bottom, and uh, we've got the ring modulator, so you can uh, talk to people, have a conversation with them. Stairs, don't talk to me about stairs. <laughs> <laughs> I know, the disabled access is terrible around here, isn't it? This is true. Have you had any luck selling your sister? <laughs> <laughs> How bad, I've just caught my foot in something. <laughs> Take you back a bit. It does rather. <laughs> it does. My first enemy ever. It was. The Daleks. I haven't got five years to spend here. How long have you got? Any time you want. Please. Shall I get that? Shall I come out? No, there's nothing all this. No. It's all I can do to keep my plunger out. <laughs> Let's face it, a Dalek is an impractical beast for universal domination. 
as I found out to my cost. This is Alistair Locke for Film 24 at Cult TV.